All right. God damn it, I'm not happy about it, but here we are once again with World of Haiku. I'm going to put some more time into this, and we're going to hope that it gets better. We left off exactly where you see right now with Dekar, who was just explaining to us that there is a weakness with mesh network topology, because if you connect to just one of those servers, you can theoretically connect to any of the other devices on the same network. Yes, that is what it says. That is actually what it says. I don't have hopes for this getting better at the three or four hour mark, as some of the um, reviews led me to believe, because my experience with the game thus far is that it has gotten worse and worse the longer we go, but so be it. Let's do as we do. All right, we're going to need to figure out which of these devices has the information we need to stop the cyber attacks. Luckily, Dekar discovered our next target. I'll log you into their device. Well, thank you very much, rascal, for doing all of the fun stuff for me. Uh, File Explorer commands in that case. Here we are. Um, there's, there's one, didn't have to do anything. Uh, there's the other one. Okay. All right, scavenger hunt continues. I don't even know what I'm collecting. I don't need to know. It's not really important information, apparently. I don't need to know things like plot, story, intrigue. It'd be ridiculous. You think this is a game or something? Look at that. We got all of the things. That's ABM. Okay. Ooh. Don't forget. Uh, looks like we got everything we can. Uh, uh, okay. Sure. I guess. No. We don't need to make decisions or anything. We'll just let Gugnir do it. The network we need to penetrate will probably belong to Agenda 21, who are ranked as the most powerful elite cyber terrorist group to date. They are motivated by political, religious, or ideological causes. Their intent is to intimidate governments or sections of the population to varying degrees by seriously interfering with infrastructure. Many times, megacore and governments will be forced to fortify their own defenses against this group or hire cybermancers to stop their plans from being executed at Agenda 21. Again, the purity level thing. It's like there's some lore that they didn't give me or something. We're headed into dangerous territory. Are you ready? God, you know, I am so fucking ready. Never been more ready in my life, you little rascal. You little rascal. Okay. Uh, and then now they want me to go to the map to select the next mission. Okay, then I shall. Who oh, is it over here? No, that's 2A, 2B. We're down here. I can't actually zoom in on that. Okay, so it must be over here. No. Must be over here. There we go. 3A, the greater of two evils. 
find AZS file and cyber attack targets. Oh, now, ooh, now we're getting serious. Now I get to learn how to use IF config. This is real hacker stuff. Now we're learning. Now that's what I call pod racing. And Nmap too. Damn. I take back everything I said. Chat bubble. We're about to find out who's paying bit credits to get this job done. We have an incoming message from Eos, formerly a cybermancer. She left and joined the Ronin faction. She still helps out from time to time. We seem to be awful buddy buddy with all of these supposed rival groups, the Ronin and the the uh, traders or dealers. That's what it is, dealers. She is the old dick nips and rascal. This network looks really secure. When you figured out how to use my expertise, on, I figured you could use my expertise on this one. Well, <laughs> if we have to use IF config and Nmap, then you know that network is secure. Because this is real hacker stuff. Earlier, you uncovered an Agenda 21 IP address while sleuthing around the decorp network. Rascal recorded in your notes. Oh, Rascal's even writing my notes down for me. Thanks, Rascal. It's almost as if I don't even need to be at the keyboard. Like, the AI can do everything except type LS and CD and cat and hit enter. It can do everything else except those three things. This is the future that liberals want. Um, Agenda 21's IP address. Ping. 9216819. We're all, uh, the internet is only 200 or so computers. That's all there is. Good job. I'll hack us into the device. How about you let me do it? Uh, I can use that tool combo to gather information about the network. All right. Yes, I, I know. I, man, man, locked. Uh huh. If we compare a network to a street, each computer is like a house, and open ports like open doors or windows. All right, sure. We may only find a couple open ports on each device, but we should try as many as possible to get in. Using Nmap, we can quickly scan all these ports and find a window of attack for us to hack into. You want to learn more details about the ports yeah, yeah. All right. Am I allowed to now? Because I tried to, just a moment ago. Oh, okay. I had to wait for you to tell me it was okay. Then I was allowed to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Highlight some key information. First, let's look at the net mask. 255-255-2550. Looks similar to an IP address, doesn't it? Well... There's a reason for that. Let's see what you think it is. The net mask tells us the size or range of the network. This is measured by how many IP addresses are available for assignment on that network range. That's not... Okay, that's... Kind of correct, I suppose. Let me think about this from the perspective of a complete novice. Okay, I'll give you that one. Sure, fair enough. I think I think that in terms of a novice approaching the subject, that is a, a okay way to put it. Um, I think that uh, a better way to put it, and the way that I do put it to my uh, my freshmen, uh, or well, they're usually sophomores by the time they start taking the cybersecurity classes, but um, is that the net mask shows uh, which I which blocks which octets are changing. Or changeable so like two five five two five five two five five um ip addresses if you just watched uh, my video earlier today on um shit what was it rogue bit um i was explaining binary decimal hexadecimal well ip addresses are actually expressible in binary as well and they're expressible in hexadecimal and such as well as well uh, as well 
too. But in this case, IP addresses happen to be most commonly expressed in decimal format, but these could be binary. So they call each group of numbers between those dots octets, and they call them octets because they represent a single byte, so eight bits. And they are those eight bits converted to the decimal format, which means that you can have each octet in a range between zero and two, five, five. 192168 are the first two octets of a class C private pool of IP addresses. Um, and then you have the third octet, in this case one, which is your subnet. And then you have your final octet here, in this case zero, which signifies individual endpoints that are connected to that network. Uh, usually one will be, well, zero is not available. Uh, but uh, uh, one is also usually reserved for the default gateway and so on, although that's configurable. But what the NetMask does is it, if you uh, express it in binary, would essentially be all ones except for the last eight bits, which would be all zeros. And if a bit is a one, what that means is that it's locked in, meaning that it can't change. So in this case, 255, 255, 255 just indicates that there are ones in all of those positions, and therefore none of those numbers can change. But since the last octet is zero, it means that all of those bits can change, meaning that all of that, uh, the, that means it's a range of values between zero and 255 that would be available. It is possible to have a net mask that's something like, um, you know, one, two, eight, six, four, three, two, or whatever, uh, you know, all of these different divisible by, by 16 values, um, because for every one you, you basically make that can't be changed, you're lowering the number of available addresses. And depending on which bits you lock in, you could maybe have a range of IPs in the upper, you know, 128 to 255, or in the lower zero to 250. Uh, 127 rather um you know address range um but i understand the way that they said it is probably easier to understand for beginners but you know normally when i'm teaching this i have visual aids that, that help out a lot so uh, i'll give them the benefit of the doubt on this one i think that that's fine To scan the network, we need to give the NMAP, NMAP the first IP address of the network uh, range. The NetMask tells NMAP how many IP addresses to include in the scan. To find that uh, first IP, aka the network IP, we can use the. Okay. So we normally wouldn't do that. Um, see that zero at the end of the NetMask? This means that the network IP is the same first three sets of numbers as the IP from IP config, but the fourth number will be zero. Yes. In this instance, the network IP address is okay. Yep, zero. Also with the single zero at the end of the net mask, you'll need to run nmap with the network IP and a slash two four at the end. That is true. That is what we have to do. Uh, and it is a shortened version of that net mask from IF config. So we should just have to go nmap and then 192. Six eight one zero slash two four. Oh, it co command is oh, how silly of me. I haven't gotten permission to run it yet. Now I can run it. Huh? No. Okay, now can I run it? Jesus Christ. All right, sweet. We got some good data to use. You can use the uh, open port information to access a host on the network. Navigate through this device using the file explorer or your terminal. Okay, and I didn't have to do anything else because Rascal did it for me. Thank you. Oh, I'm already in it. Yes. Why? What the hell? Oh.
All right. Oh, that's everything. Here I am wasting my time. Look at the username. Why does this sound familiar? I know this name. Kun Wu was once a cybermancer like me. He left because of a disagreement with Kun Yir. He's now one of the heads of Agenda 21. That means we're on one of Agenda 21's networks. Amazing. We're actually inside one of Agenda 21's networks. I am amazed. That's who he's paying to initiate the other cyber attacks. Didn't we already figure that out? Didn't we already have this information? I know that name as well. Catalyst. Okay. Uh, I'm impressed. Dick Nips. Server IP. That's got to be important to Agenda 21. Rascal, make sure you copy that down in Dick Nips notebook. You got it, EOS. Save the IP address of your notes, Dick Nips. We want to get us into a different host device on this network. Let's see what other goodies we can find on Agenda 21's network. Mission complete. Hell yeah. Next mission. I've got some good news, Dick Nips. While you investigated, I managed to break into another device. Well, thank you so much. God, it's almost like cheating. Why? You keep telling me to use who am I. I can see what the username is. It's right there. It's just like when you were telling me to do the print working directory shit. All right, fine. Oh, all right. Does it matter? Does any of this matter? What is life? That's it? Just two objectives? That's it? Okay. The first target we need to get access to is a network owned by ABM. Applied business machine located in Dallas within the United Corporate Alliance. This is the largest weapons manufacturer, distributor, and mercenary contract in the world. It has ties to U.S. government, police, and military projects. ABM is doing well after swallowing several large companies. Okay. Okay. I don't care. This is the dumbest story. Is that it? That's it? it took me, that took me a minute. And I had to just CD and cat. All right, so it's not there. It's not there. It must be down here, huh? This one. The dogs of war, the land at war. And then we've got, um, this, if there's two missions per thing, two, four, six, eight total here. Oh, God, do I have to? It's only been 20 minutes. Shit, it feels like so much longer. Using ping, using curl. We're not even using any new tools, just ping and curl. Are we at least not going to have our handheld here? We're going to have to have Rascal doing everything for us? Um. Okay, I don't even care anymore. Just, just go. Tell me what you want me to do. Tell me how many times you need me to enter CD and LS, and let's get to the end here. All right. ABM IP. Ping. Oh, no, sorry. It was 191. 191. A scholar. Yeah, I'm earning, earning my stripes here for sure. Scholar, use at least 500 computer commands in the game. Social Butterfly, meet all the characters in the game. So there's only Decker, Rascal, Gunier, and Eos. That's four. And Sorceress, I guess. Wait, there's 12 achievements for the game. Open 100 files. Eliminate at least one horseman virus. I don't know what that is yet. Um, anyway, 
Um, all right, so now I use. Why can't it? What? There you go. Curl. Nine one one nine two one two five two. And that's that. Discover SSH address, use SSH. All right, just look at this web page as much information to see if the uh, website has a robots txt file which can often return even more info it's a page on websites that contains locations the owner doesn't want others to see and often it contains valuable file locations yep so then ssh Uh, yeah, it sure looks, it sure looks that way, rascal. That looks like a username, password, and an IP. I think I have, an, uh, I think I have enough to decode the username, password. Okay, well, you're going to do that for me, too? But well, we have John the Ripper. Okay. And apparently I don't even need to do that. I need to wait for you to give me permission. Sorry. Come on, man. Oh my god, that's it. War, one of the biblical horsemen, the... Uh, whatever. I don't care. Um, it's a bus network configuration. That means the data flow is slower because the servers depend on that one central cable. Thank the grid for that, or the virus would have gained control of the CDS much earlier. We need to find which server the horseman virus is operating on, then run the Zion on the virus to shut it down. My network tells me that the war horseman virus might be called Big Red or Red Dawn or something like that. Oh, there's the timer. 15 minutes. You'll need to find the infected device manually. Looking at their flight status, these missiles will reach the targets in a few minutes, so we're running out of time. All right, so this is just me fighting World War Three by uh, changing directories my job can I show it can I note those Seems like important information right there, but. Oh, okay. So this whole time they're sitting there holding my hand and now all of a sudden, now I'm in the deep end. Is that what it is? Now it's up to me, my own devices here to. Um... I can't. Okay. Uh, 
Tundra. Tundra two one six eight one two four four. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, excuse me. So, shouldn't be able to do this. Oh, I guess so. So, this is the kind of stuff where, you know, if Rascal hadn't been doing this for me this entire time, it would have been a great opportunity. For the game to show me how to do this kind of stuff you know if i were a novice learner or something like that it seems like that would be useful but you know instead it does everything for you until all of a sudden it stops which doesn't really seem particularly useful um that's not it Under mail, okay. There we go. I already got those. Oh, I'm wicked right now. Why am I wicked right now? Oh, password's incorrect. Okay. Cobra one nine two one six eight one ninety. Ricky Dicky Tavi. What am I even looking for? I'm not sure.
going to be the same message. Yep. Um, all right, so then what's the deal with this? Uh, users must use from concerts and enjoy briefing and all. I don't know. I'll do one, two, one, two, one, six, eight, one, three, four. Oh, okay. I must have typed it in wrong before. Arctech one nine two one six eight one two four. Okay. All right, I've discovered the infected device. Read something, huh? That's it, the horseman virus. Neutralize it, we need to know the path to the file and use the Zion key on it. Path to the file is where the file is located, how you get there, the path, and this is first, uh, then control. Okay. Yeah, I, I get it. What do you want me to do? Okay, so Zion. Can I just copy this? Goal completed. It wasn't that close. I had four minutes left. Uh, we still have to find the other viruses. Here is the virus file is not readable. You should be able to open it to look for more information. Send this to Okay. Oops. I wonder what Ketnes means. Add this to your notes. Okay. Thanks. Ah, shit. Oh, son of a bitch. So... All right, after the crash came back, progress completely wiped out, and worse than that, I, it seems I can't even, like, go back to progress to where I was because I don't have any of the, like, I'm not even getting the first text. I mean, Steam definitely kept my progress because I've got all my achievements and everything. Um, shit. Fuck. The auto save is gone. The auto it's just gone.
Yeah, it's it's screwed. It's screwed. We're gonna have to start a new game and God, I really don't want to do that. Uh... All right. Nah, I, there there is every fiber of my being wants to just quit at this point because my hopes of this turning around are just so low. But on the other hand, I had just gotten to the part of the game where we had the first mission where we didn't have people holding our hands and we were actually left to our own devices. And that's the point where some of the reviews said that that's where things got good. So... Cue training montage. Secret word, mission completes, we're back on track. And now we can proceed. That was uh twenty minutes, give or take, uh to get back to where I was. So all right. So, new gameplay. Hopefully the training wheels are off. Hopefully we start learning something. That'd be great. Pick up 
Ping to see if a network is accessible. Use curl. Okay, we're finally going to use John. It's, that's something, at least. I mean, none of the tools that we've been using, none of the commands, ls, cd, any of that stuff, none of that is specifically cybersecurity. That's just Linux. And Nmap, while it's used in security work all the time, it's not just a cybersecurity tool. Like, it's a port scanning tool. You can use it for all kinds of things. Network, network administrators use it all the time. Um, John, John the Ripper, I guess, is the only tool I've seen in the game. I haven't used it yet, but we will in a moment. It's the, the only tool in the game that I would say is really security work. Like that's a tool that's just used really for because it's a password brute forcer. It's like it's for cracking passwords, and that's not something that uh, other disciplines really have much need for. Um, so this it's the only one in the game that is cybersecurity focused, and it's, it's not even really that difficult of a tool to use. So it's not like um, it's inaccessible to somebody who just wants to try to learn how it's uh, used. Anyway, uh, Dick Nips, you've done great so far navigating the grid based off the chatter of the October Guards. Internet, I have a feeling things are only going to get more difficult from this point forwards. Remember, you have resources to help you. The manual, your notes, and of course, me. Okay, let's get started. OGI globally supplies 48% of daily food and water intake. A malfunction in their international supply chain scheduling would mean a complete halt to deliver us within minutes. Seems like we built ourselves a house of cards here and getting ready for an earthquake. That halts. We have uh, chaos and rioting within hours. In the following days, there will be mass casualties and thirst. Okay, this is uh, the famine horseman virus at work here, yes. Uh, use the ping tool to see if we have access to the OGI site. It didn't say, okay, it did say minutes. OGI ping. One, 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 two, one, please. Ah. Now use curl to see if there's any useful data that we can. Okay, stop. There. Oral. One, one, nine, two, one. Okay. All right. You're not going to highlight it for me? You're not going to highlight the part that's important for me? There's a, okay, this is, a, this is a first. This is a first. I mean, it took me 20 minutes to get back to where I was, but then again, I, I already knew what they were going to be asking me to do and all that. Um, of course, it, what really slows me down in these games more than anything else is the commentary because I can't shut the hell up and just play a game for a couple of minutes. So, hope they. I also have index. That's, a, oh, that's the contact page again. Use curl to look for data. Okay. I've run an nmap scan. Why are you... Like, rascal, come on, man. Training wheels are supposed to be off. Let me just run the freaking scan. You're doing the parts of the game that I'm supposed to be doing. It's really irritating. Okay, uh, uh, I've run an Nmap scan and found the mail service port is open. Looks like they're using an older version that's vulnerable, running an exploit to get us. Oh, you're going to run the exploit. Okay, you're running an exploit. Okay, nice, I'm in. Well, aren't you a master hacker, rascal? I'm so glad that you're here to play the game for me, because otherwise we would be doomed. I kind of feel like as the main character in the game, I should be doing these things instead of just tagging along a robot's adventure, but that's fine, whatever. Let's read through these messages for some clues. Okay. I also used the file explorer more in my second playthrough to see, you know, if that really added anything to it. And as I suspected, all it really does is removes even, it even removes the Linux trainer, which is already pretty poor in this game, but it removes that from the game. So then it's just literally a clicking simulator. It's pretty bad. 
<sighs> you have a username and password here. Am I going to need to know this? Probably not. But I'm going to do it anyway. I'm not going to let the game dictate the kind of fun I have. I'm going to go ahead and enjoy uh, copying and pasting stuff. My heart's content. Ain't nothing there. Look, oh, these look like, uh, oh, sorry, it did call it out for me. Sorry, I didn't see the thing. Uh, uh, those look like access credentials to get into one of the other servers. It's probably the file. Yeah, it is. So, is it okay with you if I, if I go there? Because normally I can't even enter commands until you tell me it's okay to enter them. Like if I try to, it tells me the command is blocked. So, <sighs> okay. Um, well, it's this is the FTP server. This is the FTP server. Do I have FTP? No, I don't. So, are you asking me to SSH to an FTP server? Is that what? Is that what's about to happen? OGI transfer. Now, I've noticed this about the game too. There's a bug that I didn't pick up on on my first time through. I mean, I picked up on it because I was like, oh, why isn't this working? But the bug is SSH always fails this first time. Username and password may be incorrect. So it will prompt you for the password, but it will fail it right away. You have to go a second time. This, it's going to, I'm going to SSH. Sorry for the weird cut. I had to actually take a moment there. I had to take a moment. So none of this would be a problem if it didn't bill itself as an educational game. That's my main issue. As it says, it's an educational game for teaching cybersecurity skills. That's what it says. I didn't make them write it. That's what it says. Education. It's an educational game. Looks like a file with hash username and passwords. You should copy this data to your notes application. Can I just You did it for me. You should copy this to and you wait, no, this is Rascal's notes. Okay. Rascal's notes. I'm done here. So it told me that you said you should copy this data to your notes, but you went ahead and copied it to you to the notes anyway. So thanks. Appreciate it. All right. Was that okay? That was everything, right? Or was there another? Okay, that was everything. Hashed means the original text is modified into illegible shortened text. Um, I guess that's mostly right. That, yeah, that would be like an explanation I might give to somebody who had absolutely no idea what the hell uh, any any of this was, but okay, I'm just, there's so much wrong with this, I'm not even going to bother nitpicking here. Just go, just go, just do it. You need to use our cyber tool called John the Ripper, fondly known as John by Grid Runners, to decode the hashed credentials. John is only as good as the word list attached to it. Well, that at least is true. 
Right now, the default word list is pretty basic, so it might only decode some of the usernames and passwords. We may need to change our word list later on. Um, before you can start decoding, you'll need to extract the password hash into a new file. Let's take a look. My Efimovich sounds promising. Okay, let's decode their password. Are you going to do this part for me too? Oh, you already have it in there for me. You make things so easy for me. Um, pass you think password hash.txt sounds good? Uh, let's see if it will let me even. See if it will even let me do something different. <laughs> it did. Okay. Well, at least you let me do that. Uh, all right. Uh, we can use. All right. Let's. We're in the tokens directory. There it is. Uh, I did not know. No, I didn't. I didn't use password hash.txt. I. Uh, I went my own way, uh, rascal. I. Uh, don't think of a rebel. That way. Yelena 14, we can use. Did you uh, update that as well? Where is it? Oh, I can't change your notes because we're not going to Yelena 14. Remember, John is only as good as the word list using it, so the more complex a password, the larger a password list we will need. Um, well, that's not true. John is only as good as the word list it's using is true. But the more complex a password is, the larger uh, password list we'll need is not necessarily true. It's all about probability. So John, uh, John the Ripper, if you're not familiar with this uh, tool, um, it is able to infer plain text passwords based upon um, the deterministic nature of hashing algorithms. So what that means is that you have, let's say you have any data, any amount of data. Hashing works by passing it through a hashing algorithm, which derives a hash value, uh, a string of letters and numbers exactly like you see here, right? Different, ha different hashing algorithms will use different character sets and result in different outputs. So sometimes if you get really good at identifying uh, these hashes by sight, you can even tell uh, with the resulting um, hash value, you know, what you what you ended up with, whether it's, there's different hashing algorithms that result in, for example, there's MD5 and, and so on and so forth. Uh, not important. Uh, but deterministic means that even a small change to the input results in a drastic change in the output. So in this case, this user that we're looking at right here, my Fimovich, this is the hash value. And that hash value will be the same length of characters regardless of the data that went into it. It's not really modifying the data so much as it's computing a value based on using the data as an input. So think of it like a simple algebraic formula where if you go like A plus 3 equals result, right? So A could be anything. A is going to be your input, your password in this case. So if you type your password is like... Let's say your password is the word password. Well, if you convert the word password to the numerical value, whatever that happens to be, and add three, you get a result. That result will be different if you, if your password is like your dog's name or uh, a number like six or something like that, right? The output will be different. Well, it's a, it's the same thing uh, at a basic level with a hashing algorithm where whatever you put into it results in a value. The difference is that with a hashing algorithm, the value, regardless of what you put into it, will always be the same length of characters. Um, and if you change something, even a very, very small thing in the input, it results in a drastic change in the output. So if you have two inputs, which are basically identical, let's say password uh, with a lowercase p or password with an uppercase p, it will result in hash values that don't look anything alike. Like they will be dramatically different. That's to make it specifically difficult to derive what went into creating the hash value. But there is an inherent weakness there. A hash value is not hashing, I should say, 
is an integrity measure, not a security measure, meaning uh, that it's not meant to offer any kind of security at all. Its deterministic nature undermines any potential security value. And what that means is that if you have a password, and your password is something that only you know, like your dog's name. Your dog's name is Marty McFly. I have your hash value. I don't know that your dog's name is Marty McFly, but I can tell it is if I can take input, pass it through the same hashing algorithm, and derive hash values. When I just happen to come across the name Marty McFly, my hash value will be the exact same value as yours. So even though I can't decode your hash, I can infer the plain text with near 100% certainty because I have the same value, and that's what deterministic means. Small change results in big change into output, and that output is going to be the same um, depending on the input, right? So um, the more complex a password is, you don't necessarily need a larger password list. It's all about probability. So what that means is that uh, most people have very simple passwords. So you can have a very short password list of the most common passwords, and it will serve you okay. Um, but if it's a complex password, it probably isn't going to be on a list of common passwords, right? So if you look at the top 10 most common passwords for the last 10 years or so. It's going to be things like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, uh, password or password 1, um, football, um, baseball. You know, the, the, these are legitimately common passwords that are used. Um, but if my password is baseball1278, it's not going to be on a common password list. But what if I did have a password list? and it was on there well then it would still crack it just fine it would take only a couple of seconds so it doesn't have to be long it just needs to be a password list that happens to have the correct inputs on it so that it can infer that plain text so uh, it's wrong about that uh, that said larger password lists do have more passwords on them and so that's more data that john can truck through in order to derive those hash values and infer that plain text so that's why large password lists are um, Nice to have on hand if you're using John. Uh, the most common uh, popular password list these days is RockU. Um, there's a couple of different versions out there. There was actually a new version that was released not that long ago with something like billions. I think it's up to billions of passwords on it. Um, the downside is that all of those passwords take longer to iterate through because it is an iterative process. John going through the inputs and hashing each one of those and comparing the values to each other when that happens. Um, okay. So it's wrong about that. It's half right. It's mostly wrong. My F M O H at, I can't remember what. Oh, there it is. It's one, nine, two, one, six, eight, one, five, four. And it's got that bug, so it does that. Yelena 14. Yes, we got in. Now let's see what the main network looks like behind this firewall. Mission complete. Mission complete. We're now in OGI's main network, and we only have a few minutes before the entire supply chain comes to a halt. We need to find the Famine Horseman virus. You should find the IP address of the operation server while looking for various ports and hosts on this network. When going gets tough, check your manual. Uh, the virus is intelligent and adaptable, so we'll need to adapt to. Okay, oops, it was already open. Open up. I'm just going to use the file explorer because... Why not? It just makes the game even easier than it already is. All right, Telegram saved. Good afternoon, Mikhail. Mikhail. Uh, 
All right. Well, it's one of these. Um. Oh, yeah, that's right. And I'm also supposed to. I don't know why it's asking me to do this scan again. We've already done the scan, but. Ah, mouse is dying. Um, QA safety department. Uh, supply chain division credentials updated. This is department wide notice for your recent cybersecurity threat. We will move in the supply chain controls to the remote control system sector. Your immediate higher up. Okay. And then there was this. Yes, unfortunately for business, we are still experiencing rather strange glitches in both our orders and supply email networks. Unfortunately for me, that gives me an excuse to chat with Yelena again. Uh, not to worry, I will mention your password was. I speak to her today. Funny is, I guess you can speak to her login password. Check with Nikolai over it. Smolenskis and see if they too are experiencing issues. We talked about this for them, yeah. Check on here. Um, oh, it, it prints it in both. Brings up a new, ah, uh, brings up a new window and prints the output to the thing. All right. Smolensky synth F. Um, Oh, I suppose I probably also need to crack these other passwords, don't I? Let's try this one. Found password. Uh, and that was I'm not even going to bother with it. I'm just going to print the output in both places. We might as well just... All right, this is where I know is the same thing we saw before. Damn it. Typing around a microphone. No, go back. All right. Lena is on point. She doesn't get busy and forget. No Chernobyl humor. I'm not joking. Well, that's just some poor taste. Synth beef. All right, that seems to be that. So let's go back to cracking the next one. Uh, let's see, let's do. That's the wrong character. That's the wrong fucking character again. Typing around the microphones. Pain in the ass. John. Bosiana. Okay, and that's. 
192.168.173. Weird glitch. Mouse dying. Back to the file explorer. Gotta mix it up. New creds. There we go. WhatsApp off. Hammer time. 49. Username. Which is where this has got to be cracked. Okay. What is that? Men love chocolate, raisin is effort pie. It does sound fucking good, I'm not gonna lie. Latest reader of flash is important. Okay, we saw that. All right, did we crack all of these? Uh, we did this one, we did this one, we did this one. Uh, didn't do that one, but there's nothing there to crack. This one is the last one, so. Weird bug again. Hey. Okay. Need to send you later to your username credential for the week of blah 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 username and blah, 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 blah. copy. Also need to send out reminders that credentials are expected to be updated again. But why? Uh, suppose you want to do this here, save emails, urgent email. Anyway, serious issues that are just going to play terminals, you look at this, but you don't receive. See, the user has to go to the grant access. Okay. Look. There's the operation server. Those other hash credentials upon the FTP server could be used here. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Tired of typing all that out, so let's do this. Wish we had a better word list attached to our John tool. Ask and ye shall receive. Gungnir told me that you were using pretty old word list with John, so I'm bringing you an early Christmas present, a brand new word list. God, you must have broke your back doing this. Based on my uh, network advantage of this virus, it's probably called Blackberry or Blacklist or something like that because the famine horsemen always fail. <sighs> yeah so glad so glad she's on our side she has uh the almighty text file of potential passwords that's oh by the way all a word list is it's just a text file with a list of potential passwords uh I'll explain how to get I, okay didn't we already go through this uh-huh you know, there's a timer running, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh.
That was a lot more than three. Come on. There's a timer running. Okay, so the dash dash word list thing is correct. I don't need you to make that decision. Ah. Weird bug again. It's this bug. I can see why they missed it because it's not like you're SSHing like fucking 300 times in this game or anything like that. So I can see how they, they missed this obscure thing that I'm doing using SSH from the command line. Now we're in, see if we can find anything. Inside this one. I found it. Guys, I found it. Yeah, that's it. I found it. Quickly use the Zion command. Yes, I, I will. I shall. I did. I have. I can. I won't. Um. Didn't you. Or do I just put the file in? There we go. I thought I wanted the whole path. I thought this was what I do the last time. Dirty cyber cow exploit. Uh, I need the path. Yeah, I just... I put the path that didn't work, so... I just used the file name, and then it did. So... Rascal, what? <sighs> okay, if the uh, pattern is holding here, we're now done with this one. There's going to be two missions over here and two missions over here, and then it's done. Ah. <sighs> How many hours am I at? That's like three. I think the first video was 45, and I think I played for like another 40 before my crash. If I take 20 out for getting back to where I was after the crash, and it's been an hour, that's another 40 minutes. All right, so, okay, that's two hours of play. That's not quite what we were after. We were hoping to get at least three. Okay. Oh, we're going to use Hydra. Hydra is a, another uh, security tool. Okay. 
<sighs> Sounds like we're going to be doing at least something new. The way the way that they handled John wasn't bad. I mean, that was it was you know, like the absolute lowest level simplest way to do a password cracker like that, but they they did it. They used you know, like there was hash values and word lists. Um, I mean, that's not really that complicated of a process to begin with. So already simplifying a simple process, but it was there and it was correct. So there's that. Lendwe is the planet's leading biotechnology and eugenics megacorp. Why is there a eugenics megacorp? It's also contracted by ABM to be their main vendor in bioweapons experimentations. Oh, this does not sound good at all. I'm hearing from LNW's network traffic that they're losing control of the biocontainment facility for the bioweapons research laboratory. The lab housing the Crown 4749 virus. Uh, has locked out LNW's control. The Crown 49 virus is a fatal airborne bioweapon. Well, I'm glad that they've got such strict controls. That's that's what you, that's what you want to see. If released into the public, it will cause a deadly global plague within weeks. Let me guess, this is pestilence we're facing now. Pestilence, yes, indeed. We need to find the containment control server where it is most likely allocated. Use the ping tool to see if we have access to the domain lendway.co. See that IP associated with the LNW blah blah blah? Yes, I do. Use an nmap on that IP to see if there are any open ports we can access. I shall... Oh, wow, we're actually using novel networks here. <laughs> nice. They, they, they have other numbers to use. Amazing. Nice. I see that the SSH port is open. Well, rascal, you're the fucking hacker here, not me. Why don't you go ahead and just get me in? We can use a brute force attack by which we can guess the access credentials by trying multiple username and password combinations. That is Hydra. Yes. The Hydra is a brute forcing tool. We can feed username and password word lists into Hydra and it will brute force the login at a specified port. I happen to have an old username from an AI friend in LNW system that we can try first. You have an old username from an AI friend? AIs can have friends and keep information on user credentials? And then share them with other AI because they have personal relationships with them. That's not terrifying. All right. So the difference between, uh, so as I explained before, what John the Ripper does is you feed it a word list of potential passwords. One at a time, John will hash the value it's fed using the hashing algorithm that you either that either it can detect based on the hashing, uh, the hashes that are provided to it, um, or uh, that you tell it, and then it uses that hashing algorithm. Say, let's say input A, hash it value, compares the value that it received or it calculated with the hash value that you have provided it, and then just works backwards. Like if, let's say you have a hash value and the hash value is 7A3. And you feed it input A, and the output is 66H, uh, then it knows that's not the password. But then you feed it input D, and it's, oh shit, I already forgot the number I used, but the same hash value as before. Then it knows that it's D. Uh, Hydra, on the other hand, is a true brute forcing tool, and it will take those same uh, word lists, or, or it will take word lists, and it will just uh, make attempts to authenticate. <clears throat> Um, 
here, let me explain. Please do, Rascal, please do. The command should look something like this. Hydra, dash L, username, dash P, password list path, then the protocol, and then the target IP. Uh, that's correct, sure. Hydra and John are our cybersecurity tools. We don't use them very often. They're used in very specific use cases, usually in pen testing. I will once again highlight this game builds itself as teaching cybersecurity skills. It does not say it is a hacking simulator, but both of these things are pen test tools. You may use them for things other than pen testing, like maybe once in a while, I, I guess, maybe if something really weird happens. But, um, but yeah, these are both pen testing tools, but neither of them are really hard to use. They, you, don't, you shouldn't need much training on them to begin with. Uh, let's look at the L username portion of the command. The dash L is a parameter that is case sensitive. When you use the dash L, you'll feed Hydra a single spe specific username. If you use the big L, you will feed Hydra a path to a username word list. That is also true. Uh, I have the username HAL3000, so we will use the small L. Now let's look at the dash p password list path portion of the command the dash p is a parameter that is case sensitive when you use the little p you will feed the hydra a single specific password if you use the big p you will feed hydra a path to a password word list decker provided us with an awesome password word list so we will use the big p with its path documents rock you hey rock you is what i was mentioning before that is a password list yes it is the most popular password list uh, rock you is a list of passwords that are number one they're, they're actually aggregated from a number of different sources and these sources is what makes them a good password list so rock you is comprised of passwords that have appeared um numerous times in data breaches actual data breaches so while we can sit there and we can talk about what makes a good password the question of what passwords are people actually using is a different matter so when we're talking about password control or password entropy control. Um, we have technical controls, like for example, telling users that they have to have a minimum number of characters, uh, that it has to contain uh, you know, at least one uppercase, alphanumeric, special characters, and so on. But we can only create <clears throat> these rules, and then it's up to users to create their own password based on those rules or within the limitations of those, those rules. So the question um, is, very interesting, as a matter of fact. Given a common rule set, what passwords do people tend to use? And we find that even with strict password entropy requirements, people tend to take the path of least resistance. They gravitate towards very simple, easy to remember passwords because human memory really sucks. And it's better for some people than others, but still, it really sucks. Um, and so, how do we know? that this is the case? Well, the answer is there's data breaches all the time and passwords get cracked and leaked all the time. And so Rocky is an aggregation of passwords in real life that people have actually used. There's no usernames attached to them, so we don't know whose password it is, but it appeared on a breach list. And so it's been compiled into uh, rocky.txt. And we find that since human behavior while individually we are terrifyingly unpredictable and dangerous creatures, our behavior in aggregate is shockingly predictable. Almost even more terrifyingly so. And so we find that RockU is a very effective list in a lot of cases um, because it is real passwords from real people under real conditions, real entropy requirement conditions. So people tend to use those passwords all the time. Um, all right, now let's look at the protocol portion of the command. This is how the Hydra command will be speaking with the username and password we're trying to access. It really just gives Hydra information on how to format an authentication request because every protocol is going to look a little different. This takes time to explain. Uh, I would recommend you read up on it in your manual for now. I'll tell you. Well, let's actually look at the manual and see what it says about it now. Huh? Look at all of these categories. Look at all of these categories. This game is... <laughs> this game is... Uh, it thinks very highly of itself. Look at all these categories. 
all of these are basically empty. I have the feeling that they really want to add more to this game, but this is not an early access game. It should be done. I'm judging it because it says it's an educational game and it's done. That's why I'm being harsh on it. It says it's educational. It says it's done. So he told me to go here to, to look up more about this. So let's do and see what it says. Go down here. Uh, Non-optional service input to Hydra must be used to tell Hydra what service protocol we are brute forcing against. For example, we're brute forcing against SSH on the standard port of 2.2. How is this any different from... You're telling me, I don't have time to explain now, but go to the manual. And the manual says the exact same fucking thing you just said. The manual offers no new information. Nothing different. And lastly, let's look at the target IP portion of the command. This is the location of the device we're trying to brute force into. For this instance, it would be 10.164.178.97. Use this information and have a crack at executing. Okay. Hydra HL HAL 3000. No, HAL 3000 B. Documents. What the hell? Okay. Uh, it was lower. Okay. No tab complete here for some reason. Um, and then SSH 10.164.178.97. Wordless supply doesn't exist. It does though. It definitely does. Okay, let's try maybe not. Doing the reference, okay. You did not have the, did not want the reference. Did not want a reference. <sighs> okay. This is rough. Okay. Uh huh. Weird bug. Um, what? Oh, wrong username. 3,000, not 300. Ah. We're in. My AI friend who gave us this username told me there was an employee sharing password-sensitive information. I guess there's a chat log saved in this web server. Let's see what you can find. They're waiting for you, Gordon, in the test chamber. Hey, I got those for you if you still want them. You wouldn't believe how unsecure their emails are to each other. You know full well I do. This little arrangement is going places. You'll see. If you're serious about moving forward with this, I've got another good buddy looking at office spaces in Shenzhen. Also, Mumbai. China would be my preference at this point. More on that later. Deets? This is greater than greater. Greater than greater. Greater than greater. Greater Yeah, tell me. This. Oh, okay. Mission complete. Watch this. Uh. Okay. I'm. Uh, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Let, let's. Let's get a preview of the next mission here. Maybe. Let's, let's Stop the horseman virus. 
Oh god. You know what? We're, we're so close to being done. No, we're not. I don't want to do three more missions. This is well, it's all the same shit. Okay. I, I'm gonna end it there. Um I, I'm past the point where people said it got good. I'm past the point where um the tutorial was long long ago over with. Alright, so my uh, my final impressions of the game, uh, of where I'm at right now, uh, is this what they promised it would be? All right, let's look at it this way. Um, is it an educational game? Uh, only in one case. I do not recommend this game to anyone who is interested, in, like if you're university level, high school level, middle school level, and you're starting to get interested in cybersecurity, you want to find some place to start so that you can develop some basic skills and understanding of what this field is like, uh, this is not the game for you. This is only an educational game for primary schoolers. Primary schoolers only. Um, if you look at it with the, the, the cutesy rascal uh, corporal mascot AI uh, the doing everything for you, the baby's first Linux simulator, um, the holding your hand uh, through every step of the way. Um, it requires, uh, yeah, if, if you're in like third or fourth grade, this is an educational game. If you're, if you're anywhere past that, this is not an educational game. Um, this isn't a good way to learn Linux. It's not a good way to learn cybersecurity skills. It's, it's just not, okay? The game gets a couple of concepts really wrong because it oversimplifies the concepts and it uh, it gets reductive to the point of absurdity, which is fine if you're in that explain like I'm five mode. And maybe that's the problem. Um, there, There's no rating, like age rating on the game. Uh, it's Let me look a little bit more here at there. All right about this game this is the long form uh description the world of haiku takes you through an amazing cyberpunk rpg adventure in a world where the only way to survive is to constantly learn new hacking skills uh okay it's not an rpg there is a skill progression tree but it's based on the number of times you enter commands and there's no reason Oh, and it's also broken because I had to restart the game. And rather than preserve my uh, progress, it's stuck because I've entered these commands dozens and dozens of times since I restarted. Um, but there is a skill progression tree. It doesn't function. There's no... It doesn't do anything. So you can't just throw a skill progression tree in there and say it's an RPG. It's not. It's meaningless. It, it's a tracker for the number of times you've entered commands. That's not an RPG. There's no like uh, feats uh, or or uh, like skill points to invest or anything like that. There's no levels or, or anything. And apparently, it's broken anyway. But I couldn't. You can't get past level one even when it's working. So that's one false statement in the first sentence. The second false statement, uh, the only way to survive is to constantly learn new hacking skills. No, we didn't even use a hacking tool until the fourth mission. The rest of it was just basic Linux commands, and it's not even a full-fledged Linux command emulator. <laughs> so, no. This idea that the, the game would have us believe that Linux is for cybersecurity. And like, if you're learning Linux, then you're learning cybersecurity, but that's just not true. Linux is an operating system. It's used all over the place. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's used all over the place for all kinds of different things, for all kinds of different reasons. It's true that there is a version of Linux based on a Debian distro called Kali Linux that is pretty much a cybersecurity build uh, because it has a lot of preloaded tools and, and stuff on it. But that doesn't mean that Linux is for hackers. It's just not. All right. <laughs> like, like I said, John and Hydra. 
Nmap is not a hacker tool. It's just a tool. It's a port scanner. It's used all over the place all the time for various different reasons. Um, but John and Hydra, okay, those are those are security tools, sure. Uh, hackers can use those. Uh, but you're not really learning those skills. You're just learning how to run them, you know? Um, so that's two falsities in the first sentence. The second sentence, set in a highly digitized society where giant mega corporations and covert government agencies fight for control, play the part of freelance hacker team operatives that work in the shadows of the grid. Um, I get that there is an aesthetic here. I wouldn't say it's cyberpunk. I don't even know what to call it. Um, but it's mentioning purity levels. It's mentioning mega corporations and all of that. But that's not really in the game. It's kind of like in the background. They're they're mentioning these things, but none of the work that we're doing or none of the things that we're seeing really tell us anything about the world or the lore. We're not really immersed in any of that. It's just like there. Uh, with each mission, you will gain a core understanding of how the real Linux operating system works and how to control true-to-life cyber tools like John the Ripper, Hydra, Nmap, Ping, SSH, and many more. Okay. Three sentences in. You're not gaining a core understanding of how the real Linux operating system works. You're getting a gist of how the command or the output of the commands. Uh, true-to-life cyber tools... John the Ripper and Hydra, okay. Nmap, okay. Ping, SSH, and many more. And the many more is LS, CD, PWD, and so on. Everything you learn in the game powers you up even more in real life. It doesn't. You're not, this is not going to teach you anything. It's just not. Surf the grid. No, we're not really surfing anything. Rascal is leading us around and we're entering the same commands over and over and over again. Hack into Megacorps. No, Rascal's doing the hacking. And decide your path in the game and in the real world. No, it's very linear. It's very linear. And it's not challenging. The, the only challenge comes in so far when you are hunting down the Four Horsemen's viruses and there's a timer. That's the only time there's a challenge. The rest of the time you can take your time and at your leisure... Um, you don't even have to read if you don't want to, because they will tell you where the important information is. And it did get a little bit more difficult at about that three to four hour mark when I was playing, or I should say, I shouldn't say three, four hours, I should say, uh, around the mission four and five when they stopped holding your hands, but only marginally. So like only marginally. So, so, uh, this is an educational game for really young learners, very young learners first second third grade um after that i think you can transition to something else um and i say that for for young kids because the cutesy cartoons the low skill bar the uh you know uh the over explaining very simple concepts all of these would be useful things for very young learners but outside of that this is this is not an educational game now, as a, a, it doesn't build itself as a hacking simulator, but that is what it's trying to do. It's talking about learning cybersecurity skills. It's not teaching you anything about cybersecurity. You're learning Linux and you're learning about some pen testing tools. That's not cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is a huge field. Lots of topics. Um, none of them are mentioned in this. Not, not, not at all. Um, Right, but as a hacking simulator, it's also a very poor one uh, because it's not, not challenging uh, and uh, it's holding your hand way too much. Uh, it, it basically puts it in the same same realm as a lot of those other lower tier hacking simulators that we've, we've, we've seen. So if this game were, and like I said, maybe this is me because I found it on Steam and there's no like suggested age range or anything like that. If this is designed for for primary school kids, uh, oh, and I keep saying like first, second, third grade, uh, that's U.S. So, um, let's see, what would the equivalent be? Um, not recalling at the moment um, what it's called. Um, 
I'm sorry. My international school knowledge is failing me right now, but I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm speaking in terms of the United States. Here in the United States, uh, kids begin school at age four. Age four is optional, but that's 4K uh, or pre-K. Um, school becomes mandatory at the age of five with kindergarten. And then age six or seven, they're in first grade, then second grade, and third grade. And by the time they're in sixth grade, which is the end of their primary schooling, they're about 12 years old. Then they go into middle school. Or, well, actually, you know, I realize that that's just a thing that's done in my area because uh, a lot of primary schools in the United States only go to fifth grade. And then sixth grade begins middle school. Um, but where I'm at anyway in this school district, it's K through six and then seven, eight, and nine is middle school. And then, uh, 10, 11, 12 is high school instead of having a four year high school. Um, because where I live, it's, we have the largest, most populated high school in the state. So, um, anyway, point, my point is what I was trying to say is yes. So very little kids is what I'm getting at. Like six to six to around maybe nine eight or nine that that is where this this game should be targeted if it's to be targeted as an educational game this is definitely not a game for adults i wouldn't put this in front of any middle schoolers or high schoolers i wouldn't put i sh wouldn't put this in front of any university students that's for sure i'm definitely not going to do that um but other than the, that very young kid range uh yeah this is could not be considered educational in any any respect all right, I'm going to have to stitch together a couple of videos here. So um, I'm done with World of Haiku. I don't recommend it. If you're having fun with it, if you like it, you you have at it. You go nuts there, guy. Um, if you want to learn Linux, get Linux. If you want to learn how to use JTR, um, John, or Hydra, or any of those, uh, there are plenty of other better ways to do that. And uh, take care.